At the recent World Economic Forum, youth unemployment was described as one of the global community's most critical problems. At Youth Profit, we are focused on identifying what practical steps can be taken to reduce youth unemployment. We are particularly interested in ideas that demonstrate new approaches that are sustainable. As part of this work, we are exploring the ideas of people who have demonstrated leadership in the search for answers to this important issue. Matt Wood is the Executive Director of First Work an organization advocating the expansion of services for unemployed youth. First Work represents 70 agencies and colleges serving youth throughout the province of Ontario. Welcome Matt and thank you for agreeing to participate in this discussion. First Work represents a community-based strategy to youth employment. Your association is advocating the development of a sustainable youth employment network as a response to youth unemployment. If successful, what would this network look like? Well, our network has a lot of successes right now, and we have uh, we work with a number of different uh, governments and a number of different uh, private foundations and other uh, stakeholders in youth employment um, to be really successful. Uh, we need to uh, continue to try to develop the right metrics to find out what success means. How do we measure the success of a young person when they're developing their career? And how do we design programs uh, that are replicated across uh, the province, across the country, uh, that achieve uh, successful measures for young people? Um, of course, it's the funders' responsibility to design those measures and to hold whoever they give some money to accountable for achieving those results. And uh, we're very interested in having uh, rigorous uh, measures in place so that we can succeed and we know how to succeed and we can uh, report on it effectively as well. Um, right now, when I look at our network, I think that they're, I'm going to say about two-thirds of the funding is very, very well spent and is achieving excellent results for young people. Um, in particular, for people who are, let's say, at the 20%, the base of the pyramid, those people who may not have a lot of resources for themselves, may not be achieving in uh, post-secondary education, may have had trouble completing high school. So for that sort of demographic, our network does a very good job already in about two-thirds of the cases. Another third of the cases, the, uh, the programs are designed awkwardly, the paperwork becomes a huge burden, and other issues that come in place when you're administering a youth employment program uh, become barriers to success. So I would like to see uh, some program redesign with maybe a third of the programs that we operate. Uh, I'd also like to see a very large investment to redouble the programs that are effective. Um, the fact is that uh, youth employment programs are relatively few and far between, are relatively underfunded. And it wouldn't, um, it, and I think if we were, are to achieve excellent career development or advice or support for every young person in Canada, then that really requires a significant investment. So if we can double the amount of youth employment funding in general, and whether that's through the high schools or through the community-based organizations such as ours, um, then uh, I think we'd be well on our way to success in our network. As one of the leaders in the sector, I'm sure you, you would relish an opportunity to fulfill one of your own personal dreams with respect to how to solve youth unemployment. If someone was to come along and write you uh, a check, give you that opportunity, what would you do? Well, I would thank them very heartily first. But I would also, um, we have a vision for a system where youth employment centers are in every community in the same way that high schools are in every community. And I would like to see a system where uh, youth employment centers partner with high schools to help those young people who may be struggling one way or another, who may be deciding to go straight into the workforce after high school, which is a very vulnerable decision to make and have youth employment centers support uh, those high school students directly um, through a partnership with, with the high schools. Now, I don't think that that kind of system should be 
uh, given directly to high schools. And the, the, the main issue there is that high schools have a very important purpose and teachers have a very important purpose and that is to deliver curriculum and ensure that young people are, are learning up to the standards that's expected of them. Whereas the key success in the youth employment program is engaging with employers. And having the employer at the table and buying into the youth employment program uh, is absolutely uh, the way that youth employment programs succeed. Well, right now, schools are not focused on employer engagement. They're focused on curriculum delivery. And frankly, they shouldn't be burdened with another a very different responsibility. Um, whereas youth employment programs work on employer engagement every day. They are working with small and medium-sized business. They're working with large business, primarily through franchisees. And they are finding job placements for young people across the country and in their local communities. So that kind of employer engagement has to happen. That the expertise has to be housed somewhere. And right now it's well developed within community-based agencies, in particular in Ontario, but in other parts of the country as well. And um, if uh, that expertise is going to be built and delivered to youth across the country, uh, then you should start from where you're strong. And that means starting with community-based agencies that, that uh, implement youth employment programs. Thank you, Matt. Your comments are very helpful and make a valuable contribution to our work at Youth Profit. I hope you have the opportunity to pursue that dream you just described. Thanks very much.